The good times, the happy times. Memories captured on film. Life would be pretty dull without photography. We take it for granted. What exactly is photography? How does it work? Photography is all based on a natural phenomenon. When certain silver salts are exposed to light, the silver in the emulsion, in a matter of seconds, turns into dark metallic silver that registers a black and white image. Now to get from black and white to color really took some doing. A lot of people worked on it for a lot of years before a satisfactory method was developed. What they finally came up with is this. By combining the dyes yellow, magenta, and cyan in various combinations, we can produce a variety of other colors, such as the red, blue, and green that you see here. So, if we can capture the various colors in a scene and record them as three images, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and put them together, we can reproduce the original scene. Since it is obviously impractical to take three pictures of every scene, the trick was to get these three colored images on one piece of film. That's what today's color film is all about. We'll demonstrate with this model. The cyan image is formed in the layer closest to the support or film base. The magenta image is formed in the layer in the middle. And the yellow image is formed in the top layer. In between, of course, there are filter layers to bar upper layer colors from passing through during exposure. That's only the briefest glimpse of the principle of color film. It takes some very complex developing procedures to turn these color layers, called emulsion, into actual visible color. But at least this is what color film is. Three layers of selectively sensitive emulsion on a clear, tough support. Now, let's have a look at an actual emulsion. Emulsions start with some very bright people pursuing the objective to improve a specific film. Faster speed, better color rendition, easier processing, or a mix of these and other characteristics intended to make our pictures better. Present emulsions are so good and have come so far, it's a tough job to make improvements, but that doesn't slow down the efforts. Besides brains, you have to have faith and determination to be a development engineer. When working with a number of interacting layers of emulsion, it may take hundreds of experimental formulations, hundreds of test coatings, and more time and money than the accountants care to think about. But if our initial ideas were sound, eventually they'll pay off. And if repeated tests prove that the new emulsion is consistent, that it will deliver its designed qualities time after time, it can be released for production. Light-sensitive operations are always carried on in the dark. But here, we'll turn on some light in order to see what's happening. Emulsion making is a highly controlled custom operation. And to get the same results obtained by the experimental operations, mixing must be precise. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can be left to chance. Every single material must be critically evaluated. Time, temperature, weight, volume, mixing speed are exacting. Here, 
pilot lab practices are duplicated, but on a larger scale. And the care, the dedication, the super careful testing are unending. If the emulsion batch is approved, it's put into cold storage and held until called for. Now when a particular type of film is scheduled, each emulsion needed in the multi-layer coat is withdrawn from cold storage and separately, each is warmed up to its optimum manufacturing temperature. And now, a final series of tests to be sure that the rigid specifications for the emulsion are maintained. As I mentioned a few moments ago, film in its simplest form is an emulsion on a supporting base of clear plastic film or paper. If we're talking about slides, movies, or print film for your camera, then the support is a clear, tough, inert plastic base. Optically clear so that it won't interfere with your picture image. Tough so that it will go easily through your camera or projector. Inert so that it won't react in any way with the emulsion. Few plastics will meet those strict requirements, but our acetate base is one that will. Strange as it seems, the acetate for the base starts out as just plain wood. Wood contains the cellulose used in film base. First, the wood is chipped. Then it's treated to leave only the pure cellulose. The pure cellulose is combined with acetic acid. The result is pellets of cellulose acetate, which are mixed with solvents, and a plasticizer. This results in a plastic syrup that pours like honey. In the manufacturing process, the cellulose acetate is mixed with the solvents and plasticizer in huge quantities. The plastic syrup is then spread thin and smooth on the surface of this very large wheel. The surface of the wheel is highly polished to give the film base its optically clear finish. Long rows of coating machines, five stories high. Inside each one is a wheel the plastic is spread on. As the wheel slowly turns, the plastic hardens and peels off as film base. Here, in a stream of warm air, the base dries and gets an adhesive layer to hold the emulsion. At the far end of the machine, miles of plastic base wind up on a big spool. The process goes on around the clock, every day of the year, the finished roll is ready. With the casting machines running all the time, the trick is to take the full roll off and thread up a new one while the base keeps rolling out. As in all phases of filmmaking, the new base must be tested. A strip is sent to the quality control laboratory. First, a visual inspection. The light reflected in the film base shows no scratches. This machine tests the thickness. It must not vary even a few ten thousandths of an inch. The chart tells the story. Stretch it until it breaks. A strength test. A bending test. And a tearing test. The tests have proven that the new roll meets Kodak's standards, so it's stored, ready for emulsion coating. So, for slides, movies, and print film, the support for the emulsion is a clear plastic. But suppose you want prints. Now you need paper. Not just any paper, but paper with superior qualities. And here's how we do that. The paper starts as premium, high-grade cellulose pulp. The pulp has already been processed and treated to eliminate impurity. Kodak tests every batch of pulp to be certain it adheres to the rigorously high standards we require for photographic paper. Tons of pulp and thousands of gallons of pure water go into a large vat called the hydropulper. 
The hydropulper breaks the pulp sheets down into a suspension of individual fibers. Huge whirling blades at the bottom of the vat will take only a few minutes to break down the pulp sheets into a smooth pulp slurry that the paper making machine requires. Stretching out well over a city block, this paper making machine is extremely precise. This complex giant is directed here in master control, where all the operations are under constant supervision. The machine deposits the pulp slurry onto a traveling web or screen. Much of the water runs out through the bottom of the screen. The free-floating fibers intertwine uniformly on the screen, forming a very wide sheet of paper. The paper then passes through heated rollers that squeeze the remaining water out, compact the fibers, and dry the paper. The paper is wound up on the opposite end of the machine. When the roll reaches its maximum size, over five miles long, the paper is torn and the spool is re-threaded without stopping. Samples of every roll are taken for testing in the lab. Bursting test, how strong is it? Stiffness test, some papers need to be stiff for special handling requirements. Tear test. No step, no process is left unturned to make this paper the finest photographic paper that can be produced. The large rolls are slid into sizes, more convenient for handling in the steps to come. The paper is then given a resin coating to waterproof it and add brilliance to the finished print. We're making progress. We've seen emulsion being made. We've seen support materials. Now let's put them together. Just as in every other phase of film manufacturing, emulsion coating is a highly technical and critically controlled process. Not even the smallest particle of dust is allowable. Emulsion coaters wear static-free shoes and lint-free clothing. No air enters the plant until it's been through banks of very fine filters. And the quality of air is continuously monitored. Coaters even pass through a person cleaner, a large vacuum cleaner that removes any last bit of dust before they go into the coating room. This man gets the word. The emulsion is ready. It's piped directly to the coating machine. The coating machine is as long as a football field. Most of it is enclosed, but we will be able to look at some of its operations. Remember, this operation is done in total darkness. Normally having no light, the operator uses an infrared scope to examine the coat without fogging the film. The coat of emulsion is set and dried by a draft of ultra-clean air. Experienced technicians backed by a computer constantly monitor the operation to assure consistent results. Eventually, the film, still in total darkness, is wound up in big rolls, enough film for a half million pictures. As at every other stage of this long process of film manufacture, samples undergo a thorough test regimen. It takes a very high order of precision to achieve the quality and consistent day-in and day-out results that Kodak's customers have grown to depend on. This high order is maintained by experienced and dedicated people. While the testing goes on, the rolls are held in storage until the inspectors agree that they meet Kodak's standards. Well, the emulsion and the base are now together, and rather successfully, I'd say, according to these test strips. No bubbles, no dust, no scratches, even coating, almost ready for the market. But first, the finishing. When testing has proven that the emulsion and coating meet specifications, the large rolls are taken out of storage and slit into smaller ones, including popular sizes such as 110, 35 millimeter, and 126. If these rolls are to work without a hitch, accuracy here is paramount. Just a slight deviation in the width of these rolls and the film would bind in cameras. So these slitting knives are inspected regularly. Cartridges that have been molded to the exact size are assembled and lined up for inspection. Then, onto the spooling machine.
Here, the film and the backing are inserted into the cartridges and the perforations punched along the edges. Everything is together now. The completed cartridges are inspected front and back. Then a very thorough test is done on a number of cartridges. Does the film lie flat? Does it wind through easily? How about the perforations? Are the film and the backing paper lined up exactly? Any emulsion or surface defects? Constant testing. Testing every step of the way helps to keep Kodak film dependable. Finally, the cartridges are sealed in moisture-proof wrappers. Packaged. Then, off to capture memories around the world. No film story would be complete without instant photography. While instant picture taking may appear to bear little resemblance to conventional snap shooting, actually there are probably more similarities than dissimilarities. Emulsions are made, coated, and tested with the same care, the same rigorous quality control. The principles of development are similar. It's just that each picture unit carries its own darkroom. Let's see what elements make up a picture unit so we can better understand how they're made. First, there's the white film coated with emulsion that the image forms on. A filter to make the color come out just right. A small pouch that contains the processing fluids. Spacer rails that control the amount of chemicals that reach the film. A trap which contains ingredients to coagulate and neutralize the excess processing fluids and a mask which serves to hold all the elements together and provides a clean frame for the picture. In the manufacturing process, all of these elements are taken from storage and brought to the assembly area. The machine that puts all these elements together is as exciting as instant photography itself. It was designed and built by Kodak engineers. It's a computer-controlled assembly machine that automatically gathers the different elements together and assembles them into picture units. Because of the light-sensitive materials involved, these procedures normally take place in total darkness. The machine then automatically inserts 10 picture units into a cartridge. It then stores the cartridges. The machine's computer allows it to constantly monitor itself monitor every step of the assembly procedure and automatically conduct a very sophisticated quality control program. While the cartridges are in storage, more samples are taken for quality control inspection. When the inspectors are satisfied that the cartridges and the picture units they carry meet Kodak's exacting standards, the cartridges are sealed in foil moisture-proof wrappers, boxed, and cartoned for shipment to retailers all around the world. Yes, indeed. It'd be pretty dull without pictures. <laughs>